Hi everybody, my name is Vicky O'Neon. In this video, we're gonna take a look at how to program electronic drums and loops for live performances using Ableton Live 11. V drums and the Roland SPDSX. Earlier this month, I had the amazing opportunity to perform at Team Great Britain's homecoming concert from the Olympics in Tokyo at Wembley Arena. I was a part of the house band together with some amazing musicians, all under the guidance of our incredible musical director, MD Tim Maple. And we played with almost all the artists for the show, including Lauren Vula, Youngblood, Anne-Marie, KSI, Griff, Misha Paris, and the Spiritual Choir. And we also performed with Nile Rogers and Chic, which was definitely a career highlight. To play good times together with Nile was a dream come true, really. So my part of the show was all run from Ableton Live 11 and then I used an extended version of my V drums that I used as triggers using MIDI programming. And all the program changes were controlled from my Roland SPDSX using customized Max for Live devices. And I also used the iConnectivity Play Audio 12, which is a fail-proof live playback interface. So in case my main computer would go down, it would automatically switch over to my backup computer. So if you're interested in learning how to build electronic drum programming for live performances using Ableton V drums and the SPDSX, keep on watching. Before I get into the programming of the set, I'm just gonna show you how everything is connected. So it's all MIDI programming. I don't have any audio coming from the V drums or the SPDSX. So I have an old school five pin DIN MIDI cable coming out of both the V drums and the SPDSX. They are going into what's called the Mayo XM, which is a MIDI converter also by iConnectivity. And that's then connected to the host port on my Play Audio 12. And then I have two different USB cables going out to my A main computer and my B backup computer. So that's the setup really, and then the rest of it is happening inside of Ableton. So the first step I did when I was sent the songs was to import all the music into my arrangement view so I could really start to familiarize myself with the material. And I was sent a combination of one shots, so individual sounds, and then loops that I then had to figure out how to best chop up to recreate live. So after that, I created an instrument rack with drum racks for each individual song I was playing. So the right sounds would be on the right pads for each song. And I also had to figure out how to best change between kits, between songs without having to touch my computer. And I knew if someone knows how to do this and have some good advice, it's Tobias Hunk who runs AbletonDrummer.com and he also runs a Facebook group called Ableton Drummer. So I called him up and he gave me some really good advice and I also downloaded his Max for Live devices, which you can see here. So one of them is called SPDSX Buttons to Chain Selector, which is essentially became the key function running my whole set. And I also have the SPDSX Master FX button to MIDI remote. Um, and basically what these do is that they enable me to control changes using uh, the plus and minus buttons. So here you can see I'm changing between different kits. Um, and then uh, usually these four buttons here are just one MIDI note, so they can just control one thing, but with this little Max for Live device, it splits it into four different things, and then here's loads of different actions that you can choose between. So with this, I can then, for example, scroll up and down scenes, and I can also um, start a scene and also stop all clips. So these Max for Live devices are really, really handy to have for this specific setup. 
So in order to actually get these changes to happen inside of the instrument rack in Ableton, I also have to set up the chain selector, which you find here. And the only thing you really have to do here is to, to uh, assign these tiny little boxes here all to an individual uh, note value. So I'm just starting up here with number one. And then I'm just going down number two, number three, number four, number five, number six, and so on. And that will then basically correspond to the same kit numbers that I have inside of my SPDSX. And then I can just use my plus and minus buttons to move around here. And another little trick, because um, I didn't know what our set list order was going to be when I programmed all of this. But then you can literally just use the... Uh, the kit chain inside of SPDSX and create the set list in there. And when you have the kit chain activated, then it just changes in that order. So you can see that the numbers here are actually jumping around. Uh, and that's just depending on what my set list was for the gig. So I also had to work out how to make sure the right sounds I'm sending is going to the right pads, either on my V drums or my SPDSX. And that all comes down to specific MIDI notes. And for my V drums, I actually just have a one kit loaded for the whole set where I've assigned specific MIDI notes. So I just created a system inside of drum rack that worked for me uh, that is the same for all of the songs where basically these three pads here would always be tom one tom two and tom three one two three although sometimes i would have completely different sounds than thumbs underneath them but i would know that these are the places for them and then these three up here would basically be these three pads and then the snare pad would always be this one here at the bottom and then if I go up, um, I have these six pads here, which would represent basically these six pads on the SPDSX. So I think it's important that you just create a system that works for you, where you keep it the same for each song, because uh, then that just makes your workflow a lot easier. And also when you're in rehearsals, if you have to go and chop and change things, it's really easy because you know where everything is placed. So my role for the show was also to run any open sections. For example, I started off the whole show when the presenters walk on stage because we don't know exactly how long it's going to take for them. So we need to keep that as an open section. So I did all of that uh, from my session view. And here I also used MIDI notes and MIDI mapping, uh, mainly to just start different scenes that had the loops on them. And uh, I also had the clip that was going to everybody in the band coming from my system. Uh, so you can see here, for example, here is, uh, here is the click, here is vocal cues, and then I have uh, different loops just running here. And here is, it's all just done with simple MIDI mapping. So I would just make sure that I select a MIDI note value on my SPDSX pads that is not being used for anything else. And then I would just uh, basically MIDI map saying, okay, this is the scene that I want to be started from this specific pad and then that's done, basically. Super easy. And then for some of the songs, I also had individual loops that I needed to start in a specific place. So then I just MIDI mapped, uh, again, another uh, empty MIDI note value, basically, to start just that specific loop. So I'll just give you a little demonstration of this. When I heard Tim say in my ears, go Vicky, I hit this pad. <laughs> And there the click goes. That's not being sent out to the stadium, obviously. Just these loops are. And then I also had, I had some sounds here. That I was playing along to. And then that stops here. One, two, and then I'm starting these next loops here. And then I was just waiting for him to go and say, one, two, three, four. 
and then I just stopped it. So I always have this pad up here as my stop pad, regardless of which song I'm on. And another super handy little box inside of Ableton Live 11. If you click on a scene, double click on a scene, then you see this box come up here where you can change the tempo, you can change the time signature. You can also do a follow action where you can basically say that uh, automatically after two bars, 14 bars, 32 bars, you're gonna go somewhere else to the next scene. You're gonna stop it. What's gonna happen after that? Um, so that's something that can be super handy. So you don't even have to do that manually. That can also all be pre-programmed. Um, and again, here, tempo is super, super important. Uh, to make sure that the loops are obviously uh, looping back in time. Okay, next I wanna talk about routing, which is something that is absolutely crucial. Uh, which sounds are gonna be sent where to the sound engineer? Uh, so I'm just gonna show you how I've done this. There's many different ways that it can be done. First of all, I set up a bunch of return tracks here, which kind of works as a sub mixer. Uh, so I could always see from my end where the sounds were coming in and going out. And that turned out to be really, really handy. And then I had to go into each individual kit and actually each individual sound that I had created and then basically say that, okay, I want the kick drum to come out of channel one, all the snares and claps to come out of channel two, all the toms to come out of three and four so we can get a stereo image. So I was also panning them from inside of here. Then five and six was all the higher frequencies, all the loops that I had chopped up. Seven and eight was the actual playback loops that I, that I was playing. And then channel nine was the metronome that was being sent out to everybody. So it was nine channels basically that I used for this setup. So I also had to create some return tracks in side of each drum rack so it would send the right sound to the right return main return that I had created so here for example I have four different returns I have the kick and then I need to say that okay the kick is gonna go to the a return track which is the kick drum the B is gonna go to the B return track, which is the snare drum. So I'm basically just mirroring here what was going on up here. Then I would take each individual sound, basically, and then I would say, okay, audio from this tom here is gonna go to the tom's return. So then that was sent here, and from here it was sent here and from here, it was sent out to the sound engineer. So that's basically the workflow. And it might seem a little bit complex, but it's actually pretty straightforward once you just get used to the habit and then you just quickly go through all of them. You know where you wanna send everything and just you just assign everything where it's meant to go. So some songs were a little bit more straightforward in terms of the programming, where it was just one shots that I had to trigger, like uh, Rise Up that Misha Paris sang, for example. So here I just have a kick, <coughs> snare, clap. So I just had to uh, create the delay for the snare and the clap. But some of the sounds and songs that I was doing were a little bit more complex when I had to work out how to chop up loops like uh, something inside, for example. So, uh, the individual sounds. That's that, and then just trying to work out, okay, how can I find a nice rhythm playing this and actually make it sound like the original loop and not all just <laughs> chopped up, you know? Uh, but that was one of the things I actually thought was uh, the most fun. Uh, I have a loop that I've chopped up and then there was another loop that started later on that I couldn't physically play. So then I have to trigger that loop. So it's just working out how all of that can happen at the same time. So
So another thing that I did with all the samples was to normalize the volumes to make sure that they all sounded as even as possible in between songs. Uh, so uh, I simply did that by right clicking and just going normalize volumes. And I did that on each individual one. And for most of them, I also took the uh, velocity here down to zero, which means that regardless of how hard I'm hitting the pad, it will always trigger at the same volume. In some cases, I didn't want that, like for Tom fails uh, and some claps where I want the dynamic range. But for most of it, it's playing the loops back. I just want that velocity to be on zero. So it's always uh, coming out at the same volume. So knowing that this was a live TV broadcast, I knew that there is no space whatsoever for error. So uh, I realized it's super important that I do have a redundancy backup computer just in case this uh, this one would go down, which of course didn't happen, but never say never. And that's why I got the iConnectivity's uh, Play Audio 12 interface. And it's super cool actually what it does. It basically just automatically flips over to your backup computer if it doesn't get a signal from your main set. And that's actually all being controlled by this tiny little... Um, VST plugin called Life Sign that you can get from their website. And all it does is that it's sending a constant signal uh, to output 13, which is just a, a built in output. And if this signal gets cut in two milliseconds, uh, it just switches over to your other computer. So it's important that you have an identical set, obviously, on both computers that can be run simultaneously. Although I absolutely love all of the electronic programming and live performance of it, it was also fun that I got to play the good old acoustic percussion for some of the songs like uh, David Bowie's Heroes that was performed by Youngblood and also KSI's Holy Day. I was playing congas, just suited that feel good vibe for um, Griff's one foot in front of the other. I also created a conga bongo part that was sort of uh, emulating uh, an electronic uh, loop that was uh, in her arrangement. And then I also played with uh, Nal Rogers' Good Times. I played congas, uh, which was just absolutely amazing. So amazing. And then I also had a, a clap for the choruses, which I think uh, is definitely needed for that song. So here's that. So yes, that's pretty much it. Let me know if you have any questions, drop a comment below, and also let me know if you think this video has been useful and if you would like to see more videos on how to program electronic drums and loops for live performances. I do have some other fun videos here on my channel, so do go and check them out as well. And hopefully I will see you soon again. Take care, bye bye.